Hello, I'm Corey Redekop, Director of Policy with the Burnaby Board of Trade, and I'm joined today by Heyman Yip, who is running in the by-election this month to join Burnaby City Council. Uh, hi, Heyman, how are you doing? Good morning, Corey. How are you today? Good, good. Thanks for being here. The, um, these conversations we're having with all the candidates uh, is a chance to provide our uh, the voters, our members, and the people of Burnaby with an idea of who's running for, for City Council in the by-election this month. So uh, we're keen to hear from all the council council candidates what their thoughts are on, on some of the economic issues and, and, and matters that are impacting business. So I appreciate you taking the time to be here today. Thank you very much for having me. Did you want to take a few moments, uh, Hammond, just to share a little bit about why you're running, your background and experience, and, and uh, uh, just share a little bit about yourself? Yes, good morning, everybody. My name is uh, Heyman Yip, and why I uh, chose to run in the uh, by-election for uh, council is that I've always been uh, interested and engaged in um, municipal politics. And how I got started was in 2017, and in my um, neighborhood, we were having a lot of uh, dr drug uh, activity where gangs were coming in and selling um, their drugs, you know, in our uh, block area near Westburn Park. So I reached out to the RCMP and tried to uh, seek help, but continually ran into situations where there were shortages. So that elevated the situation where I needed to talk to uh, Mayor at the time, Derek Corgan, and on a couple of uh, meetings, that were established. My meetings were canceled when I arrived at his office. And so I was scheduled again, only to be canceled again. So I just sat there. I wouldn't leave until he would actually see me. And that's how the ball got rolling. So I uh, expressed my uh, concerns on the shortage of uh, members of the RCMP. And he suggested to me uh, what I was thinking about. And so in some conversation with some of the members of the RSMP, they didn't give me a rough number. So I started going back and looking at a bit of the history and at the peak in Burnaby, which was the Winter Olympics of 2010, I noticed that, you know, we had 30 more new officers. And that was the benchmark that I uh, asked Derek Corrigan for was 30 officers. And in a couple months uh, time, uh, Derek Corrigan got back to me and said that uh, he would be giving the uh, RCMP 14 members. And so I joined him on a uh, press release that uh, he made the announcement. And then I just basically fielded calls with the media. I was able to obtain those uh, 14 new officers. Having said that, I was still engaged in what was going on. So I started attending public safety committee meetings as an observer. So I attended every single meeting from 2017 until COVID and I missed about two meetings in person. I picked up all the information back on PDFs and as well I joined um, many of the council meetings again up until COVID-19 and again sat as an observer. Um, I dialogued via through email with many of the city councillors on issues that I heard that did not get addressed but even a reply back from council, I got the same rhetoric, which didn't satisfy my, um, my appetite. And that's how I ended up pursuing where I am today. Just looking for many things to the general public, and that's just common sense. Okay, great. Well, thanks for, thanks for sharing a little bit of your background there. And to, to get a sense of some of your thoughts and ideas on maybe some of the priority areas of, of our members in the business community, I had a couple of questions I wanted to ask you. And maybe we can start with Prime, because um, that's what you, you you led off with there. And it's, it's been one, something that's actually been starting to bubble up more um, here at the Board of Trade in the last little while. And not just the, the high profile shootings we've seen, those are distressing, uh, but property crime, break and enters, the things that are kind of a real grind and a cost for business. If you can imagine a business owner coming in and finding the the delivery truck's been been broken into and the catalytic converter's been stolen or things like that would, would just be a, a, a grind for, for a business owner. Do you have any comments? You, you mentioned a little bit there around around police uh, staffing levels. Do you have any, any thoughts on, on what, what more should be done at the, the city level or what you might try to bring to council around uh, property crime, business break and entry, some of those those levels of, of, of issues? Well, obviously, um, as, as a sitting um, member of the Public Safety Committee for City of Burnaby. I've raised uh, many uh, issues through uh, inquiries and through motions. 
So I'm very engaged in the city's uh, um, matters with uh, relationship to crime. And I'm not just uh, throwing something on the table and I'm trying to create solutions. And part and parcel uh, of late was that I introduced a motion uh, trying to get to the uh, city of uh, Burnaby and the RCMP as, uh, as well with Fraser Health to initiate a similar uh, CAR 87 or CAR 67 program as in Vancouver and Surrey where a member of the RCMP rides with a psychiatric nurse only to find out that uh, Fraser Health uh, turned that uh, request down at this time. So it's things like that, that, you know, with the COVID-19 and increase in uh, the number of um, wellness checks, it made absolutely great sense to initiate the program immediately. So I don't understand where the common sense uh, lacked in this uh, process, but obviously I think that, you know, there's a need for, you know, engagement in, in topics such as, as well too with crime, there are a lot of crimes that are not even reported. And I think those, the underreporting also causes uh, an issue with the uh, property crime and the safety of uh, the citizens of Burnaby. So I'd like to be able to continue to have um, more uh, members of the RSMP either redeployed on the ground so that they are engaged with the community. Uh, that's one of the issues that, you know, I've always, you know, made uh, noted. It's great to have all these specialized uh, RCMP units, such as the um, commercial uh, cr criminal in investigative team. But when you take out resources of eight members dedicated to one particular area, um, I just feel that um, we've lost eight members from the general duty side of things. And I believe that they could do a better job in engaging in our community, especially in the uh, business side of it, where shoplifting is just prevalent and it's rampant. It's a 24 hour uh, situation. If the stores are open, the thieves will be there. And we don't even talk about the countless hundreds of thousands of dollars businesses are losing. And not only losing it, uh, the money through shoplifting, but also the, the number of uh, hours the employees do not wish to work in those, uh, during uh, those uh, crime spree hours. Okay, great. Thank, thanks for your, your thoughts on that. Uh, I, I want to pivot a little bit to some of the some other topics that are top of mind for, for our members. And, and a perennial uh, uh, hot topic is transportation and, and traffic. And that's that's one of the key areas that a city can be involved in is planning uh, uh, roads and how it, how people move around around the city and through the city. Um, at the Board of Trade, we have 22 recommendations to the city to improve transportation, which include everything from more north-south roads, um, protecting uh, parking hubs and business districts so that maybe you can drive once to the heights, but then be able to do all your shopping there on, on foot uh, and making transit more uh, appealing, safe. Um, I know you commented a bit lately on, on uh, uh, bus shelters and, and, and lighting around that, but what would, what would your, your priorities be for improving transportation uh, within Burnaby for people who live and work here, but also recognizing our role the, as the center of the region and, and accommodating that through traffic that we have so much of. Well, I still see Burnaby uh, requiring a lot more work on infrastructure. There are so many roads, uh, in particularly in residential neighborhoods that, uh, that don't even have uh, sidewalks. And to me, it still looks like a rural part of uh, a community that is not what Burnaby construes itself as a metropolis in a big city. And I'd like to see us connecting with those communities and bring those uh, infrastructure uh, needs uh, and have them met on a sooner uh, than later basis. I understand the city uh, currently has uh, introduced and approved up to seven kilometers of sidewalks to be built, but it isn't something that the city has moved forward quickly enough to initiate. They're still doing surveys, asking neighborhoods if they would like a sidewalk. And unfortunately, um, in, in having myself engaged in some of these communities, it's usually one or two holdouts that stops that particular uh, neighborhood from getting a sidewalk and having proper uh, drainage because it's still basically culverts. 
And as far as, you know, talking about transportation and getting from the four quadrants, I find it that, you know, the traffic congestion is just unbearable. And with an area such as Metropolis, where there's 32 high rises that have been approved since November of 2019, the impact to that community and not only uh, the residences, but the businesses is total gridlock. During morning rush hours, afternoon rush hours, uh, early evenings, it takes so much time to just get through one particular area of Burnaby. I think that if during COVID-19, if the city were to in initiate um, engagement with the business community, I would actually lift and have a moratorium on pay parking so those businesses can have a small recovery in some way by the city supporting them. Okay, I'm gonna pick up on, on thanks for that. You, you mentioned the four quadrants there and then that's gonna, that kind of segues us into another topic um, that was, is, is very much in the, in the purview of, of city council, which be uh, development and plan. Um, so this, the city has focused a lot of its growth on the four quadrants, Edmond, Metro Town, Low Heath, Brentwood, um, over, over many, many years of, of, of growth. Um, there's gonna be a redo of the OCP coming up, the official community plan, um, and, and we continue to grow even during the pandemic, we saw almost record-breaking uh, building permits. Do you have any thoughts or, or when, you look, when you look back on how the city has grown to this point, what are your thoughts on how it's handled that growth and what would you like to see going forward as we continue to mature as a city over the next 10, 20, 30 years? What do you think are the priorities that, uh, that we should be focused on for our growth? Well, obviously every municipality is taking up the challenge with uh, higher density going uh, upwards in the way of building condos. However, I still think that, you know, we're also, you know, missing the middle, which is basically families that, you know, are from between three and five in a, um, in a unit. And I would really like to see the city be more engaged, not only just building up into the sky, but building rural houses and building more townhouses. And every community needs these families to, to, to make it whole. And I think that's one area that, you know, we're just addressing is how we're just continuing to build up. But having uh, captured, you know, this type of development and uh, reaping in the taxes, my concern is where are all the community centers and all the, uh, the amenities to tie in with building all these condos? And if I was sitting on council, I would definitely instruct the uh, um, planning department and the licensing department to not allow developers in high rises to put anything that has or contains uh, leisure uh, style water uh, amenities, such as whirlpools and swimming pools. Anything with water is what causes the uh, strata uh, corporations uh, uh, insurances to skyrocket. Those are all liabilities of the biggest concern. However, for a developer, the developer likes to show that these amenities are made available so that the unit or, or the units that they're selling um, are, are easier sold. However, it's always the end user that is it left holding the bag and when they realize that their strata fees are gonna be going up from between 600 to $800, now it becomes unaffordable. And having that unaffordability in that community affects all businesses. And it's always the small guys that will suffer. There's only so much disposable income. And I just feel that, you know, this is one area. And again, I'm only speaking with experience sitting as a strata council president for five years. And I've seen where the, the, the costs continue to rise, and I don't see it letting up at all moving forward. The, um, picking up on affordability, and, and I think you mentioned row homes there. That's one of, one of the things that we, we mentioned as, as we were on the mayor's uh, task force for community housing, and, and this idea of, of gentle density, of being able to, we have the single family homes throughout the city, we have the, 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 the towers constituted around the four, the four uh, quadrants, or the four town centers. But we're, we do seem to be missing this, the row home, the town home development and that would be in the middle of those two extremes. Um, so we support gentle density, maybe in around kind of corridors or transit, transit areas, 
um, so we can kind of add a little bit more density and get some of these missing, this, that missing middle um, housing form. Are you in support of, of moving density out of the town, just, just the town centers and doing it a little bit more increasing uh, uh, throughout the city? And what about laneway homes and carriage homes and, and, and secondary suites and those types of things as well? I am totally in support of, uh, uh, you know, light and, uh, you know, light uh, it, it, construction in uh, neighborhoods such as, and um, there are a lot of properties in Burnaby that are sitting on, you know, 50 foot uh, front, uh, front uh, frontage lots and 60 foot frontage with a older home that is approximately 2,200 square feet. And I'm not suggesting that, you know, we're going to tear down neighborhoods, but definitely, you know, I think we should have the ability to have a development on those type of lots where if the homeowner is going to sell the, uh, uh, the lot that, you know, it could be used in, in that capacity. We're, we're butting up against the, the time here that we have. So I want to ask you one more question and um, uh, not surprising, it's, it's uh, a, 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 top, a hot topic for, for a business audience like us is around property taxes. Um, those, those came out, uh, they were all mailed out uh, a week or two ago, and then they're due in, in the beginning of July for, for businesses. Um, and one of the issues that we're facing, or at least we see, is um, a flaw with the, with the way the province uh, assesses uh, property taxes, which means that they look at highest and best use. So if you're a, if you're a small, a small uh, one-level bakery or, or a restaurant, but you happen to be on a property that could be redeveloped into something um, more intensive, the value skyrockets and therefore the property taxes follow the value. Um, this is the provincial issue, but we're looking for council to be and, and city to be, be supportive of, of addressing uh, uh, prop skyrocketing property taxes. So would you be a, an, an ally and an advocate for making sure that the, that the business property tax rate doesn't get out of hand and that we stay competitive and fair uh, for small businesses across the region? I am 100% uh, behind all businesses and being a business owner myself in Burnaby, um, I'll give you some uh, true facts on my 2020 property assessment notice. Uh, my unit was appraised at uh, $7,355,000 and 2021, my assessment was uh, valued at $6,403,000 thousand dollars which is a reduction of nine hundred fifty two thousand dollars year over year so my property tax notice as you just alluded to uh came out and this year even with the almost a million dollar assessment reduction my property tax went up to sixty seven thousand dollars from fifty four thousand so if you are truly following a mill rate the taxes should have gone down, not gone up. So I just saw a 24% spike in my property taxes. And I've talked to a number of small businesses that saw similar increases. And it just boggles my mind that the finance department of the city of Burnaby did not recognize this. In fact, their finance committee, along with Noreen Chasm, the, uh, the director of finance for the city of Burnaby, knew full well what was going to occur. It's still, at the end of the day, the city's input. And to hear the rhetoric of them suggesting that we need to help small businesses, it almost seems like they want to help put small businesses out of business. And I would definitely change that. And moving forward, I, I have advocated and on my platform, I have already suggested for my campaign that I would reduce property taxes for businesses and I would waive the business license for two years so that we can help our small business uh, climate increase business client so that they have a chance of surviving. And I think that will foster a, 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 a more of a dynamic a growth for the city of Burnaby. And it always continues to appear that it's the corporations that take advantage of the situation. So again, I just re want to reiterate, I am 100% behind in seeing the property taxes reduced. Okay, well, th well thanks, Heyman, for, for coming and joining us and sharing your thoughts on, on all these issues we've talked about and, and why you're, you're running for council this, uh, this 
uh, by-election. So uh, for those of you watching, uh, we've invited, as I said, all the candidates to do these short videos. So please take a look at all of those, make sure you're informed uh, and, and understand how, uh, how the candidates will reflect your voice and make sure you exercise that voice and get out there and vote on June 26th for the Burnaby by-election. Heyman, thanks so, so much for joining us today. Thank you very much, Corey, for having me.